Everything around you, your phone, your chair, even your own body, seems solid and real. But what if none of it actually is? Walter Russell, a largely overlooked thinker, made a bold claim. Matter doesn't exist the way we think it does. According to him, everything we call real is just light in motion. Not just light as in sunshine or light bulbs, but a deeper kind of light, compressed into the appearance of solid objects. That includes the phone you're holding, the walls around you, and even your hand. It sounds strange, but think of it like this. Imagine your body and every object you see is like a frozen wave. You can't see the motion, but it's there, happening so fast and in such perfect rhythm that it appears still. That's what Russell believed. Matter is just compressed light, and when light decompresses, it becomes what we call energy. Solid things aren't truly solid. They're just light packed tight. You're not separate from this. You're not just living in the universe. You're helping create it. Your thoughts aren't just private brain activity. According to this view, they're actual waves of energy that influence the world around you. In other words, what you focus on mentally can become physically real over time. This isn't about believing in magic or abandoning science. It's about reconsidering the basic assumptions we've made about reality. If everything is a rhythm of light and thought, then the most important question becomes, what are you choosing to create? It's not a mystical idea. It's a very practical one. Just like overworking your body leads to exhaustion, pushing any system beyond balance causes breakdown. Nature knows this. It always restores balance, whether it's through a calm breath or a crashing wave. We're not powerless observers. We're participants in reality itself. Every thought, every intention is a ripple in the universal field of energy. The more we understand this, the more conscious we can become of the world we're shaping every single day. We're taught to believe in what we can touch and see. A rock is solid. A table is firm. Our senses convince us that matter is the foundation of reality. But according to Walter Russell, this is all an illusion. What we think of as solid objects are really compressed waves of light, temporary forms shaped by motion. Nothing is truly still. Every atom, every particle in your body is moving. The reason things feel solid is because these vibrations are happening so quickly and rhythmically that they seem stable. It's like a spinning fan. When it spins fast enough, it looks like a solid disk, but it's just motion. Think of light as the raw material of the universe. Not the kind you see from a flashlight, but a more fundamental kind of light, structured and directed by thought. Matter isn't a separate thing. It's just light slowed down and held in place. Energy, on the other hand, is that same light released and moving freely again. This isn't just theory. It matches up with some strange facts from science. For example, Particles in quantum physics don't have a fixed position unless they're being observed. That suggests that what we see as real may depend on how we interact with it. Russell went further. The observer doesn't just influence reality, they help create it. So why does this matter? Because if everything is light, and light responds to thought, then your mind plays a direct role in shaping reality. That's not just philosophy. It's a reminder that the way you think can have real consequences, not just mentally, but physically. We're not separate from the universe. We're part of it. And if the universe is light in motion, then we are too. So if everything is light in motion, compressed into form, then what's actually doing the compressing? Walter Russell's answer, mind. Not just your personal mind, but a universal intelligence, what he called the universal mind. This isn't something abstract. It's the same force that holds stars together, grows trees, and keeps your heart beating. It's everywhere, and it operates through thought. Thought is not just something that happens in your brain. It's a real force. When you think, you're not just processing ideas. You're shaping energy. Thought compresses light into patterns. Hold that pattern long enough and it becomes real. First as a mental image, then as action, then eventually as physical form. You've seen this in your own life. The house you live in? Someone thought it into existence. Every building, every product, every invention started as an idea. But it doesn't stop at objects. Your relationships, your mood, your personal success or failure, all of it is affected by the thoughts you hold most often. Thoughts aren't isolated. They radiate. Just like a pebble in a pond, every focused thought sends out ripples that interact with the world. This isn't about wishful thinking. It's about consistency. A stray thought doesn't do much, but a repeated one becomes a habit. A mental habit becomes behavior. And that shapes everything. Creation never stopped. It's still happening, right now, through you. You're not just a bystander watching reality unfold. You're part of the system that generates it. 
That means the quality of your thoughts matters, not just for your own life, but for the larger world. And if all things are made of light and light responds to thought, then you don't need to chase change out there. You need to start it in here. You're already participating in creation, whether you realize it or not. The question is whether you're doing it consciously. If creation is ongoing, if we're constantly shaping reality through thought, then what keeps things from falling into chaos? According to Walter Russell, it's one simple but powerful law, balance. Everything in the universe operates on a rhythm, compression and expansion, action and rest, giving and receiving. It's the same pattern you see in breathing. Inhale, exhale. If you stop doing either one, the system fails. This isn't philosophy. It's a built-in part of how reality works. Balance isn't about staying still. It's about moving in rhythm. A seesaw is balanced not because it doesn't move, but because its movements are equal. The same applies to your energy, your emotions, even your schedule. Work without rest leads to burnout. Giving without receiving leads to depletion. Constant growth with no reflection leads to collapse. We see this not only in individuals, but in entire civilizations. The mistake we make is assuming we can keep pushing in one direction forever. More success, more productivity, more control, without pause. But nature doesn't work that way. The moment balance is ignored, the system begins to correct itself, either gently or through disruption. Russell pointed out that this is what causes suffering, not punishment, but imbalance. A person who never stops to rest ends up exhausted. A culture that only takes ends up unstable. A world that only consumes eventually runs dry. Look at simple examples. Your phone battery, your sleep cycle, your spending habits. They all need input and output in balance. The laws that apply to small things also apply to big ones, because the pattern is universal. You can't avoid the law of balance. The only choice is whether you work with it or get forced back into alignment the hard way. And once you understand that, your decisions change. You start asking, am I moving with the rhythm or against it? You stop fighting natural cycles and start working with them. You become more effective, not by doing more, but by doing the right things at the right time. That's what balance really is. Not stopping, but knowing when to move and when to pause. Collapse doesn't happen by accident. It happens when we ignore the rhythm of balance. This isn't just true for individuals. It's true for entire civilizations. History shows the same pattern repeating over and over. Empires grow, dominate, and rise to great heights, but eventually they fall. Not because of fate or bad luck, but because they break the law of balance. They keep expanding without pausing. They take without giving back. They push forward without reflection. Eventually, the system breaks. That's not punishment. It's just a natural correction. And this doesn't just happen on a global scale. It happens to people too. Take a person who's always working, always pushing, no rest, no time to reflect. At some point, their body or mind pushes back with illness, fatigue, or burnout. That's the same law in action. When rhythm is ignored, the system restores it, one way or another. Restoration isn't just something that happens after collapse. It can happen before, if you're paying attention. That means you can prevent breakdowns by choosing balance early. Ask yourself, am I giving as much as I take? Am I resting as much as I'm working? Am I reflecting as much as I'm acting? These questions aren't soft or philosophical. They're practical. They're how you stay sustainable, whether you're a person, a business, or a society. Nature gives us the example. Trees don't grow endlessly. They follow seasons. Oceans don't only rise. They fall. The body doesn't only move. It sleeps. Everything follows cycles. Growth must be followed by renewal. Activity must be followed by stillness. The good news is, you don't need to be perfect. Balance doesn't mean every moment is exactly even. It means the overall rhythm is healthy. Like a heartbeat, it goes up and down. That's not instability. That's life. And once you stop fighting the rhythm and start working with it, everything changes. You become more productive, more creative, and more peaceful. Not because you're doing less, but because you're doing things in the right phase of the cycle. That's how we move from breakdown to resilience, from surviving to thriving. Nature always finds a way to restore balance. That's not just a poetic idea. It's how reality works. When something swings too far in one direction, it swings back. That's not punishment. It's correction. It's the system bringing itself back into rhythm. Think about a pendulum. If you push it hard in one direction, it doesn't stay there. It swings just as far the other way. That's physics. But it's also life. 
Walter Russell emphasized that every imbalance triggers a natural return to center. And here's the new insight. You don't need to wait for a crash to rebalance. You can adjust in real time. For example, if you're feeling mentally drained, your body is signaling. Pause and restore. If your schedule is packed but your creativity is flat, it's a sign you've skipped reflection. If your relationships feel one-sided, you may be giving or taking without return. These are small imbalances, but they point to a larger truth. Everything moves in cycles. When you ignore the cycle, stress builds. When you follow it, life works better. We see the cost of ignoring balance all around us. Work cultures that glorify constant hustle. Economies built on endless consumption. Individuals stretched so thin they lose their sense of direction. Eventually, all of that snaps. But it doesn't have to. This is where awareness comes in. Awareness lets you make small corrections before big breakdowns. It helps you listen before shouting is necessary. It gives you the power to move with the rhythm instead of being tossed around by it. Russell's idea wasn't just that balance returns. It's that you can live in balance by choice. Not by avoiding action, but by knowing when to act and when to rest. Not by giving up growth, but by growing within limits. Not by forcing results, but by aligning with natural timing. Instead of pushing through every situation, start asking, what part of the cycle am I in right now? Is this a time to build? A time to reflect? A time to reset? Once you start living that way, stress decreases, clarity increases, and effort becomes more effective. The cycle doesn't stop, but how you move through it is up to you. By now, one thing should be clear. You are not just living in the universe. You are helping shape it. Walter Russell's message wasn't just about theory. It was about action. He showed that everything, from atoms to galaxies, from your thoughts to world events, follows the same law. Creation is rhythm. And rhythm requires balance, awareness, and intention. Your thoughts aren't private background noise. They are real inputs into the system. What you think about, focus on, and emotionally charge, those are the blueprints you're feeding into reality. This isn't about positive thinking. It's about deliberate thinking. If everything is light and thought shapes light into form, then your mind is not just responding to life, it's directing it. That's a huge responsibility and a huge opportunity. You don't need to wait for permission or proof or certainty. Creation is already happening through you. The only real question is, are you creating consciously or by default? If you focus only on fear, you feed it into the field. If you stay in habits shaped by other people's beliefs, you build a life you didn't choose. But if you start choosing your thoughts the way an architect chooses blueprints, you begin to shape your reality with intention. That's not magic. That's design. Your mind is not trapped in your head. It's part of a larger field of intelligence. Every focused thought sends a signal into that field, like tuning a frequency on a radio. The more consistent the signal, the more real the result becomes. That's how change works, from the inside out. And just like nature, your life also follows cycles. There will be seasons of growth and rest, clarity and confusion, giving and receiving. Don't fight the cycles. Learn from them. Use them. Creation doesn't mean constant control. It means constant awareness. You are not a passive observer. You are not at the mercy of random events. You are not separate from the intelligence that creates galaxies. You are part of it. You are using it every day, whether you realize it or not. The final question is the most practical one of all. What are you choosing to think? What are you shaping? What kind of world are you creating? Starting right now.